Um, what can I tell you? Uh, I'm very happy to be here. First time in New York, first time at API Days. I'm Nicola Frankel, nobody cares about me anyway, so I will skip the introduction. I don't have that much time. Um, so who here has already written an API? Nobody. Who has ever written an API? Ah, okay, yeah, because I was like wondering, yeah. Um, and probably the problem you had, like where, uh, how should you define your entities? What would be with boundaries? And focus on the rest semantics? And uh, when should I use post? When should I use put? I mean, this is important. This is the problems I had. And so, stuff like versioning, uh, you didn't think about it. So when your business comes to you and say, hey, let's do V2, that you might have this kind of reaction, which is not super great. So in this talk, I want to show you a couple of steps that you could implement so that you wouldn't have this kind of reaction, but be just more, more relaxed. So um, I assume that this is your initial situation. Is that correct? Yeah. You have, yeah. And of course, this is a trap question, and probably it's not the case, because my solution would be, hey, uh, sorry, use an API getaway. And an API getaway will solve all your problems. <laughs> That's the end of the talk, thanks. <laughs> no, so first, the, the idea is that this is a trap question. Probably in, a lot of people tell me, hey, but we already have something, we, we call it an, a reverse proxy, it's not an API getaway. So that when I ask you, this is the correct stuff. This is the initial situation. You tell me yes, but in fact, you never expose your upstream to the outside world. Okay. So now the question is, what's the difference between an API gateway and a reverse proxy? And because I don't have that much time, I will just like tell you that is like an API gateway is an enhanced reverse proxy. It can handle use cases that a reverse proxy was not designed to handle because reverse proxy are quite old and actually, they didn't care that much about like hot reload configuration. Um, because, well, that's fine. We can have some downtime. And the configuration doesn't change in that often anyway. Or you have rate limiting with reverse proxy. But then you have like complex use cases with APIs. Like, hey, if you pay, you pay this amount, you have this profile. And so you are not that much rate limited as somebody who uses it for free. Uh, this kind of stuff. So there are a couple of API getaways on the market. I work on the Apache API 6 project, but as like, because I'm honest, we are not the only one. This is a very crowded space, actually. Um, probably you know Kong and whatever. The, like, just to tell you, like one slide to tell you about Apache API 6. First, it's an Apache project. It's a top-level project, so everything is free. Everything is open source. It's not under the control of one single company. And the uh, like architecture is pretty classical. We have Nginx, OpenResty to have like Lua plugins, and then we have out of the box plugins. So remember, I told you, hey, that's very easy. You just introduce an API gateway, and everything will be fine. So I hate slides because I hate like slides are not that interesting. I love demos. So here I have a demo, and I hope it works because of course the demo effect. So the idea is here, I have uh, two code bases. The one is the old API, the, the, the other is called the new API, and I have dockerized everything. So here is the architecture. Of course, normally you should have like multiple steps, but here I'm using Docker Compose for demo purposes. So here I'm using Apache API 6. So I have the image. Uh, Apache API 6 stores its configuration in etcd, so it's a distributed key value store um, that is used by Kubernetes, so it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, I will show you the dashboard if I have enough time. Also, I want to monitor everything, so I have Prometheus and Grafana, and uh, here I have the old API and the new API. So I will start the stuff. Docker compose up. And afterwards, I will try to curl. So I will curl directly my nodes, which I shouldn't be able to do in production. But here is just to show you how it works. It says hello. And now I have the, like, the new API. And it says hello world, but it's much better this way, right? <laughs> Obviously. 
And now I want to use the API Gateway because I told you like the API Gateway will solve all your problems. So I'm just using the API Gateway. And it tells you, ah, sorry, I don't know. What, what are you talking about? So the idea is now I want, as I mentioned, to auto-reload the configuration to add this new path. Um, so here, everything will be on GitHub. I have created scripts like here. So Apache API 6 is managed by API. So you can send a curl comment. Uh, here, uh, you can use curl directly. Here, I, want you, I don't want you to install curl if you want to do this at home, so you just need Docker. So I just need to tell the network will be the same, and it will be a curl image, and the important bit is this one. So I will use this route with this ID. I will create a new one, and because it's a very sensitive operation, I need to like authenticate, and here I need to pass an API key. Here, this is for a demo. I'm using the default one. Obviously, you shouldn't. Then the rest is about the data. This is optional. This is a name. It's just for descriptive purpose. The methods, the HTTP methods that will match this route, the URIs that will match this route, and then I define an upstream. So basically, what will I do? Where will I forward these requests if I match the, requ the, the requests? And then I define a plugin. So now if I run this and I curl again, it works. So I forward like this, this like request, I forward it to the old API on this port. Perfect. So now I am just back to my initial problem. I have an API getaway. I didn't solve anything, but now I have everything to continue. My problem is I didn't design my API to be version. So people are using the unversion one, and then when I want to introduce a V2, um, I'm unable to do anything. So the first thing to do is we should introduce something. There are multiple ways to version an API. The one that we'll be using here will be on the path because it's the most visual one but you can uh, use query parameters, you can use headers, you can use whatever you want. Path is the easiest one to demo. So here, I will just do that. And again, I have like a, um, an API call to do that. What I did before is I created the route in one go and this is actually not super great. What I want to do is to be able to reuse the upstream, for example, in multiple routes. So here, to create my version route, I will first define this abstraction, like this upstream. So again, this is another endpoint called upstreams, and I will create a new one. The rest is the same. I define the API key, and I just like copy-paste the stuff that is relevant to the upstream. Perfect. Now what I can try to do also is I can check the um, API 6 dashboard. And here you can imagine what the password is. Not very secure, but again, this is for a demo. You should always do it. And here you have the routes that I've previously created. I have the upstream that I have just created right now. And we can continue. I will create a plugin configuration. And finally, I will create the version routes. And now, I create a route with ID2. And instead of defining the upstream, I can just reference the upstream that I've created before. So I can create abstraction. I can cre create reusable blocks, and the same for the plugin config. There is one additional bit of information, though, is since I will be using v1, if I forward v1 something to the upstream, it will fail, because the upstream doesn't know about slash v1 something. It only knows about something. So before forwarding, I need to cut out the v1 prefix. So this is another plugin called regex rewrite, Re and now, if I localhost 
v1. Whoops. It works. And if I check the routes, now I, I have two routes. So you can also do like administration through the dashboard. I'm a developer. I don't like that that much, but it's possible. You can also change the JSON directly. So here, let's say uh, directly routes. And it changes the configuration in the DCD directly. So whether you are a developer or more business user, then you can use whatever tools rock the boat. Okay, that's good. But now we have two routes. So we have two parallel routes, one that is version and one that is not version. And there is a lot of echo all of a sudden. Um, the problem is if we stay like this, developers are lazy. I am a developer. I know what I'm talking about. And people will use the inversion route because they are used to it. So we want to stop that. So we can use HTTP for that. And our friend HTTP tells us, hey, that's really good. We can use the 301s and hey, like stop using it. It's really bad. We should redirect you to the like version route. How do we do this? Well, again, we have an, a URL like a call. So we can like change the first route. We will patch it. And we add an additional plugin. So in that case, we'll use the redirect plugin that tells, hey, if you are using this route, we return the code 301, and we tell people you should use this like v1 something. So let's run it. Trying to be as fast as possible because I don't have that much time. If you have questions, please feel free to ask. You're not doing the demo. That's a very good question. <laughs> Indeed, it's not a question. It's, it's a statement. It's a fact. And I appreciate your feedback. Um, so I, I just added an additional plugin. I used the first route that I created previously. I patched it, and I patched it with this new plugin. So I, re, I like I re, removed the plugins and I add those ones. Now, of course, V1 still works, and if I'm using like the verbose version, it tells me, hey, like the location should be V1 hello. Here it has moved permanently. Of course. This is what happens if your clients don't use automatic follow. So they break, they need to do something, so they fix it, or they automatically follow. If they automatically follow, it won't break. But then they will have two calls. The first one, unversion, then they will get the response telling them, hey, you should ask for like the version one, and they will have another call. So if you, are, you, if you are having clients, if you are developing clients, you should monitor. Because even if it doesn't break, it means that you will run twice as many requests. So that's a lesson. Now, even if you, don't, if you are not an API provider, if you are just an API consumer, you should monitor everything. Oops. And well, it's good. So now we have one single route, version one. And it's great. Um, but we have this issue that we had to rely to this 301, which is not super great, because we don't know our users. Because we were so happy developing and uh, deploying our first version of the API that actually we made it free. Everybody could access it. But now it's so free that we have lots of people accessing it we don't know about. And we want them to register. Who here wants to register? Nobody wants to register. Like, I don't like to give out my email to marketing people who will send me a lot of crap. But who here likes swag, T-shirts, stickers? Who? Yeah, everybody. So let's make a deal. You want free stuff? I want your email. I think we can go somewhere. So here, in that case, we will give them, like, unlimited calls. So if you don't register, we will like limit you. If you register, you have no limits. Easy. So in that case, unfortunately, I need to remember that I need to remove PowerPoint. Thanks again. 
Um, there is nothing like out of the box to have that. So I created a plugin in Lua. I'm not a Lua developer, and I don't have time to show the code, but it's on GitHub. And actually, what I'm doing here is, if there is one more, more than one call over a period of 60 seconds, then I will say, if you are not registered, I will say, hey, like, I will return this HTTP code, and more importantly, I will ask the people to register. Don't try to register, it's just a dummy uh, address, just for fun. So now I can do the same, I will call v1. I'm limited. So now I need to provide somehow a way for people to register. Here I'm using the most basic stuff. I don't want to code anything. There is a way to create what we call in API 6 a consumer, basically an identity, like a way for like a, a registration for somebody. It uses a key. So basically if I pass the header called API key with this value, my key, I will be authenticated as John Do. So I will be registered and I won't have this problem anymore. So I can do the same. I will just do H and I will do API key. There are other ones. This one is the, like the easiest one, but uh, you can authenticate with uh, OIDC. There are lots of them, but here it's, it's uh, I don't need any infrastructure. It was, just works out of the box. Uh, no, what did I do? A. You should come to every one of my talks. You are super helpful. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> so, sorry, I, I suffer from jet lag, so basically my uh, brain is not working that fast. So now I'm uh, not limited. Thanks a lot again. Really appreciate it. Um, next step is actually to go a bit further. We need to test. Who here runs, like, has unit test? I don't be shy. Half a hand. Three, four hands, okay? That five, six. Integration tests? Great, ah, more. Who runs tests in production? Come on, everybody does. <laughs> It's not possible because you can have the best unit tests and the best integration tests. At some point, you still need to work in production, so you need to, to do that in production. So you will test in production anyway, but you can be smart about it. And one of the ID behind an API gateway is you can mirror the traffic. So you will set up your two upstreams, your v1 and your v2, and you send the production workload both to v1 and to v2. You discard the V2 response, but at least if there are bugs that are produced by the production workload, you will notice them, provided, of course, you monitor it. And then, once that has been proven, you can do canary releases. And I have five minutes, so it's going to be fast. So you have canary releases. And then depending on what you want to do, like, hey, I want to release to 5% of my uh, clients, or I want to release to this geographical area, or I want to release only to people with this header or whatever. Um, so I, will, I won't demo the mirror proxy because I don't have time. I will directly go to split traffic. So here there is also um, a plugin for that, and I've configured it to be 50-50. So half of the workload will go to the, um, the old API and half to the new API. So I run it. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry, I arrived from Europe just yesterday and it's not great. So now half of my like requests will hit the new version. This is for demo purpose. You shouldn't start with 50, of course, but here it works pretty nicely. So now once you have made sure that with can release everything is fine, that's good. We can create the route version two, like you deploy it for real, and it works all the time. Great, perfect. 
And now, as a product manager, you have two routes in parallel, the V1 and the V2, and probably you will have the V3, V4. And well, as a product manager, it's not great because that means that you need to divide all your resources between all the resource, all the, the endpoints. So maintenance is going to be uh, like very not cost effective for the older version. So you need a way to retire your routes. And for that, there is no HTTP stuff, but there is an IETF draft. So basically, it relies on some headers. There is a deprecation header, can be a Boolean or a date, and you have this like a link header that points to the resource that people should use, and potentially there is a sunset header. So deprecation is, hey, it will be removed, uh, it will be deprecated at this date, and uh, sunset is uh, there is nothing here at this date. So let's do it. Here it's very easy because it basically it relies only on headers. And there is, again, a plugin for that. Um, here I'm using the Boolean because, again, I'm super lazy. And I'm reusing... Ah, thanks. Come to me afterwards. I have Swiss chocolate for you. Um, so here I have a Boolean because I'm lazy. I don't want to have a date. And I'm reusing some of the Nginx variables so I don't need to like hard code everything. And I run it. And normally at this point, if I'm using the V1, and I'm verbose, you can see that here it's deprecated true, and you sh I should use this one. Two minutes, it's gonna fit. So now last step, enjoy. <laughs> I believe that at this point, if you uh, implemented all the steps that I've shown you that for, when the business comes for V3, you will be prepared. So either you will know how to do it or you will already have implemented the steps. So thanks for your attention. You can read my blog. You can follow me on Twitter. As I mentioned, you can uh, check the GitHub repository. Everything is on GitHub. So use it, abuse it, it's, it's, it's made for that. If you find bugs, improvements, whatever, have like GitHub issues. And if I got you interested in API 6, well, you are free to check our project. It's on Apache. Everybody is welcome to contribute, become a user, become a contributor, ask questions. And now I have like one minute for questions. I, I couldn't be faster than that. Thanks. Sorry? The GitHub repo is. Well, you're done. Thanks. The GitHub repo is here. It's a bit list, so I can see how many, many people were interested in their code. At, at, at uh, hi, Nicholas. Um, quick question. How, how much API 6 is ready for the production adaptation? Sorry, how is, sorry? API 6 is ready for production adaptation. Is this still in developer mode or, or getting? I, 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 sorry, I, uh, so how I, I'm How did it is to be adapted in production mode? It's well, uh, a lot. So, um, I mean, how much? Well, it's 100%. It's already used in production and mainly in, in China, to be honest. So I'm here to spread the world outside of China because the company that gave the code to the IPC Foundation is originally from China. So a lot of the big names in China, which probably you don't know about them, and me neither, to be honest, uh, are, are using a PS6 in production. If you are interested, I can give you all the names uh, if you are interested. No, but it's the first time the product manager I heard, so I'm going to listen. And sorry, I need to leave at this point, but uh, I will be outside so you can ask me questions. And uh, yeah, thanks a Thank lot. Thank you very much. Thanks.